Hi everyone, welcome you all. So in the today's video, I will talk about API authentications. So APIs will support different type of authentications like a basic authentication or digest authentication. Uh, sometimes we use bearer token authentication or API key authentication and OAuth 1, OAuth 2. There are so many types of authentications uh, APIs will support. And uh, today's video, I will discuss about uh, basic and digest authentications. So how we can test APIs uh, using basic and uh, digest authentications in Cypress. So before doing that, let's uh, go to the Postman tool and I will show you how we can test those APIs uh, in Postman tool. Let's go to basic authentication. So this is a URL which I'm going to send, which is a get request. And this is basically the Postman API. And to pass this uh, basic authentication, normally we have username and password. So to provide the username and password to authenticate this API, we need to go to authorization section here. And in this section, you can find uh, multiple types of other authentication details here. And you need to select this basic authentication, basic auth. And here you can just pass the username and password. So the password itself is password. I'm just providing here. And this is a get request. So when you send this request, so you will get proper response. So authentication is true. So this API we can test by passing username and password and status code is 200. So how we can uh, test this using Cypress. And uh, let's go to the Cypress and uh, let me open my VS Code editor and under API testing, I'm going to create a new spec file and I will name it as basic auth dot js dot cy cy dot js okay so now i'm going to write a uh, describe log first and describe and uh, let me write a basic authentication or we can say authentications and we need to write an arrow function so inside this uh, we need to create it block so let me create one it block it and two parameters and first i'm going to show you basic authentication and uh, arrow function and inside this first of all we need to send a request so to send a request i'll call cy.request method and inside this we need to specify multiple things like uh, we can pass what type of method we are sending url authentication details and everything so inside this, the first thing what I'm going to send is, I'm going to send what type of request I'm going to send. So that request is basically in the curly brace, we need to specify a type of method. What HTTP request we want to send is get request. In the uppercase character, we have to specify. And the second parameter is a URL. So we have to pass the URL and the URL will be the same URL which I have used in the post pen tool. So this is a URL in the single quotation. Okay, so method and URL. And the next thing is what we need to specify the authentication. So which is basically basic authentication. So we have to pass user and password. So we have to use a keyword called auth. So inside this, in the curly brace, again, we have to specify the username and password inside this curly brace. So user is a keyword and uh, the value of the user is here we have to pass a username my username is pass postman and comma and then password you have to pass so for that we use a keyword called pass and the password is password itself so like this we can just specify the uh, username and password inside this auth section so the request contains a what type of request we are sending that is called method url and authorization information if you have any headers if you want to send you can send along with this uh, request so otherwise you can leave it so this is how we can simply uh, send a request okay so now we have sent a request so once we have sent a request we need to do validate whether this authentication is successful or not right so for that i'm writing then so then and capture the response and uh, this particular response we need to validate so inside this block, we will expect what we are expecting is first status code we will validate. So from the response, capture the status and that to be equal to what 200. And along with that, we can also verify the body. So in the body, you can say authenticated true. Authenticated is a property and the value is true. This authenticated also we can validate the value of authenticated. So we can just expect and get the body from the response. 
response dot body and uh, the attribute the property value is what authenticated so this we can capture here authenticated and that to be or to equal to what true so that also we are going to validate so this is how simply we can uh, write http call uh, just by authenticating this is a basic authentication so just we can pass username and password so just we have to pass username and password along with this auth so this will do the basic authentication right so let's try to execute this let me save the file and go to the terminal and i'll open cypress application i say npx cypress open All right so once you open the cypress application let's say end-to-end -end testing start so this will open the application and here i'm selecting the basic auth so now it is successfully executed and my two assertions are got passed so this is how simply we can do basic authentication okay and suppose if you want to do digest authentication so there is another type of authentication called digest authentication it is almost similar to basic authentication uh, but in an architecture level it is a difference uh, we need to pass some other parameter along with the user and password so if you are using the same thing in the postman tool or uh, digest authentication so let me show you again i'm using the same url same kind of a request but instead of using basic authentication i'm trying to use digest auth authentication so instead of selecting this basic authentication, we have to select the digest auth in Postman tool and provide the same username and password. And everything is same. When you send the request, again, we will get the same response. So this time, this API is using digest authentication instead of using basic authentication. Okay. Now, if it is a digest authentication, so in Cypress, how we can achieve it? Uh, let me copy the same script. And slightly, we need to add one additional parameter. So this is digest authentication so same method we are sending and same url user password but here we need to change the uh, keywords so instead of user we specify the username instead of pass we have to specify the password and along with this username and password we should also specify method this is additional value we have to pass what is that method is digest that we need to specify so now this will perform the digest authentication. Okay, so previously we have just passed only user and password. And this time we are going to pass additional parameter that is called method equal to digest. So same API, same URL, same kind of request, but this time it is using digest authentication. So same validation again, status code and everything. Now let me save the file and then uh, we'll see the output from this. Fine. So if I look at here, my test is got passed. For digest authentication also, the two validations are got passed. So this is how simply we can test APIs uh, by specifying uh, basic authentication and also digest authentication. So similarly, we also have something called bearer token authentication and API key authentication. So let me quickly show you how we can uh, use bearer token authentication. Okay, so what I'll do is I can create another spec file or you can just use a existing specs file. So what I'll do is I'll just try to rename this so that I will cover all kinds of authentication in the single file. So I can just name it as authentications. Okay, fine. So we have seen uh, basic authentication and also we have seen digest authentication. Now I'm going to show you uh, bearer token authentication. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use another type of API. And let me quickly show you in the Postman tool. So if you want to test the bearer token authentication API, so first we need to generate the token for that API request. Okay, first we need to generate the token for the API request. So I already have a bearer token authentication API, so which is basically GitHub repository API. And when you send this request, it, which will give you all the repositories which are available in the GitHub repository. Okay. The GitHub with your username and password or with your account, whatever uh, repositories you are already created will be displayed. All the repositories information will be displayed in the response. So if I look at this, this is the URL I'm going to send. And there are no parameters. In authorization, I'm selected bearer token authorization. And this is the token we have to generate from the GitHub repository. 
okay when you send this request what happens is which will give you all the repositories currently you have in your github repository github okay so this is the api which is going to use a bearer token authentication so if you want to generate this token we have to log in into the github repository and we can generate it so let me quickly show you how we can do this so first of all let's go to your github profile and then uh, if you go to your profile once you log into the github go to your profile and you can see here there is settings go to settings and inside the settings you can see developer settings here go to the developer settings and here personal access tokens you can see some option here go here and there are two options are there fine uh, grained tokens this is a beta version which is available and token classic i'm selecting token classic when you select this so which will ask you to create a new token so already I created one token. If you want to create a new token, so simply you can click on the generate a new token and again click on this generate a new token and it will ask you password. So once you provided your password, again, uh, once you log in, then you need to provide proper privileges to that uh, token and then uh, you will be able to create your own token. Just log in to the, my GitHub repository. And once you successfully log in, so here you can just provide the token name. So I'm just providing for testing or you can just say testing demo something. You can just provide some name and uh, how many days this API key should be. So this token bearer token should work. So you can just select how many days you want to, seven days I'm just selecting. So what are the privileges you want to give? So you can just privilege give all privileges on repository and then give privileges on admin okay and uh, user so whatever the privileges you want to give to this particular token so you can just provide and then click on generate token so once you have done so it is got generated so there's a new token which is got generated and just copy this token like this and then go back to your postman tool and then paste it over here okay so once you post it over and you have to select the barrier token option and that's it so when you send this request which will give you all the repositories which are available on your github so now how we can test this in cypress so how we can pass this bearer token so for that what you can do is let me just create another it block so it block this is for bearer token authentication okay and then curly brace oh, sorry so this is arrow function and inside the arrow function i'm first going to send a request so how to send a request again we have to call cy.request cy.request and inside this we have to pass uh, multiple things what is the method you want to pass so request method so what is the request method we want to pass is get request so i'm passing get and then uh, url so which url you want to pass so i have captured this url so i'm just passing this url in the single quotation now so after passing this url so along with the method and then url we need to pass the bearer token authentication as part of headers as part of headers we have to pass okay so before sending this request what i'll do is i will store that token in a variable okay so here i'm taking a variable let's say a constant variable i'm taking and uh, this is my token uh, I'm going to store in a variable. So whatever token I have just uh, generated, so you can just get the token and then paste it over here. So this is the token I'm going to use. This is the token I want to use. So where exactly we have to pass? As part of headers, we have to pass. Okay. So in the URL, so method we are sending and URL also we are sending. And along with this URL, we need to specify the headers. Headers and inside these headers, we have to pass. How we can specify is authorization this is the keyword we have to use authorization and uh, here whatever token we have created right so that token we have to pass so that this particular api request will use this particular token and what kind of token it is a bearer token bearer token here so we need to keep uh, one keyword called bearer so this keyword we have to use and after bearer just give some space and then concatenate with the token so this is how we need to pass token along with this bearer keyword. So now this API will go and hit by using this authorization request. So bearer token. 
fine so we have passed request method url headers and this request is got closed here and once it is got closed now we need to validate the response so dot then we'll get the response okay just a moment yeah so now we'll get the response and we need to validate this response okay we are sending successfully send the request with this authorization bearer token now once you get a response so what could be the response code is 200 so let me put one assertion expect response dot right so response dot status code or response dot status dot to equals 200 so this is our status code okay simply we can validate uh, api request by just passing barrier token authentication so whichever token we have passed so this token will go along with this url request and uh, use it and we'll get the proper response okay so response arrow function okay perfect expect response dot status so this response we have to use this response could not find a name response okay spelling mistake response okay perfect now let us try to execute this bearer token authentication so i'm going to save this file and you can see the output here let me refresh authentications okay perfect now you can see bearer token authentication successfully got executed okay so this is how we can simply test api just by passing bearer token authentication that should be part of headers okay remember that should be part of headers and the keyword we have to use is authorization so this is called bearer token authentication so sometimes we can also test apis by using api key authentication like we have a key and a value so which we have to use like a api key authentication so how we can test api key authentication now let me show you in the postman so if you go back to the postman, I already have uh, another API, which is basically find the weather condition in the particular city. Okay. So this is the API request and uh, I am passing something called API key. So this is my key app ID and this is the value of app ID. So when you pass this and when I hit this request to get request, now I'll get the weather condition which is there in the current city, whatever I'm passing here, which is basically query parameter, Q equal to del is a query parameter. And in this, how the uh, current condition, weather condition, it will display the all the details. So to authenticate this particular API, we have to pass the key, which is app ID and the value, which we have to pass. So how we can generate this app ID and this key. So I will give the website and you can just go there and you can just create your own key and a value. So for that, uh, I'm going to this particular page. Uh, this is the one openweathermap.org. So this is the website. And if you just go to this website, you can find all the APIs. So let me open this. Yeah. So this is the uh, API, which will provide all the weather conditions on the cities. Okay. So if I just go back to this API, you can find different APIs and different versions. And uh, if you want to use uh, this one, current and forecast weather data collection, you can just go to current weather data. So if you just go to API doc, and uh, here you can just read what are the different endpoints they are providing and what are the contents you can get from the request. You can just uh, go through this document and you will understand how exactly the API works. So if you want to generate the API key for this app ID and API key, we have to pass. If you want to pass this along with this request, we have to create. So to create this API key, so we have to first log in and then we will be able to create. So okay, just first log in, you have to log in and once you successfully log in and there are some options will be provided for generating the API key. So this is free and you can create your own API key and you can use it. Okay. Now, so this is a, uh, this is the URL. I'm currently sending Delhi and this is a value and app ID which is created. And when you send the request, now you get the weather condition on that particular city. Okay. Now, how we can test this in Cypress? Now, go back to the Cypress VS Code Editor. Now, I'm going to create another edit block. So, it 
and this is API key authentication, API key auth, and arrow function. And in this, first I'm going to send a request. CY dot request, CY dot request. And uh, inside this request, we have to pass multiple things. Uh, we have to pass type of uh, HTTP request in the curly braces we need to pass. So first thing, method, what type of method you want to send? So method is what? All are lowercase characters, method. Okay. Say method. Yeah. So method is what? Get. Passing a singular double quotations, anything is fine. So the method I'm passing, get. And then URL. So we need to pass the URL. So I'm just copying this URL as it is. And this is the URL I'm going to send. Okay. Now. So along with this URL, uh, we have to pass headers and the API uh, key should be a part of, uh, okay, so that API key, whatever we generated, right? So that we have to pass uh, as a format uh, in the form of query parameters, okay? So if I look at the Postman tool, right? So this app ID key value have to pass as part of query parameters. So here Q equal to delete, right? this is also query parameter. Along with this, we need to pass this key and value as part of query parameters. And authentication is again API key, okay? So we already know how to pass query parameter, right? We have to use QS keyword. So by using the QS keyword, so we can pass the query parameters. And uh, normally we have already one query parameter, Q equal to delete. And along with this, this app ID is also query parameter, which I'm going to send. So what I will do is I will remove this query parameter from this particular URL, okay? Or else you can keep no problem because anyway, we will pass this query parameter along with the QS or else you can just keep no problem. So Q equal to, I'll set Delhi. So you can also pass multiple query parameters, right? You can just do it. Okay, so just comma. Now, along with this URL, I'm passing one more thing called QS. QS is representing what? Query parameter. So now we need to pass this uh, API and key, which are part of query parameters. So how we can pass it? We can just pass app ID. That is a key. And what is the value of this app ID? The key which we have generated, right? So that we have to pass. Get this in the put in the single quotations. So now query parameter app ID we have passed. So Q equal to delete this parameter. Anyway, we are passing through request. And this is actually API key. So this is the API uh, key. And this is the value of that particular key. So both we need to pass. So this is API key and value. So that we need to pass along with the query parameter. Okay, done. So once you have done this request, uh, that is enough. We can just validate the response. Okay, so once it is done, so now we need to write the response dot then. So we need to get the response and uh, then write one more block so inside the response what we want to validate we want to verify the status code i can say expect status i can just say response dot status dot two dot eq and uh, 200 is our status code that's it so this is how we can pass api uh, key and a value as part of query parameters okay so let us try to execute this save the file and see the execution so now apk authentication is successfully passed so this is how we can simply uh, pass apk along with the value so here we can also pass this query parameter uh, in this particular list we are passing this api key and value right so these are also query parameters so if you want to pass multiple query parameters what we can do is we can just remove this value from here Okay, remove the question mark and that query parameter also I'm going to pass as part of this QS. So you can just put the colon here and then value is what? Delhi. So like this. So now we are passing two query parameters. One is a actual city name and the second one is a key and a value. So even if you run this request, which will pass. So let me save the file and then see the execution. Now API key authentication is also successfully passed. Okay. So this is how we can authenticate APIs. Like we have basic authentication we have seen and a digest authentication, and then bearer token authentication. And finally we have seen 
API key authentication. So these are the different type of authentications will be supported by API. And other than this, we have some more authentications like auth1 and auth2 authentications and that we will see in the upcoming videos. All right. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see in the next video.